Hey, good morning, friends. Good to be with you this morning. Oh, it's been a great day of worship services so far. We're going to be three for three, I am certain. Uh, God is so, so good to us. A couple of quick announcements before we jump into prayer and worship and praising and singing. Um, oh, make sure you check out your bulletin. On the inside in the mission middle are some pictures from our youth group's service day a couple weekends ago. It was pretty awesome, I heard. I'm kind of, well, not even kind of. I'm totally jealous that I didn't get to be a part of that. <laughs> so, um, so now the confirmation kids are going to get to do that so that I can do it too. <laughs> so we'll be doing that. Um, there's a couple of other announcements in there. Um, we have one more installment of Camp S'more. Yay! At the end of the month. So make sure you check it out because we will be transforming the Family Life Center into a cinema. Yay! And we'll be showing a movie that I'm not allowed to name, but I think that your uh, clues in your bulletin should be enough that you know uh, we're going to be preparing for a luau. So that's one of the clues. And there's a, a special pet that gets introduced in the movie, so that should be another good clue. Um, so make sure you join us for that at the end of the month. Um, if you want to help out in any way, there's a way to sign up, a way to donate to different items, so you can check that out. Or, of course, you can always connect with Kelly Burton when she gets back with us. So I um, wanted to lift that up for you, and is there anything else I needed to announce? There's youth group tonight. Youth group is tonight. All right, 6.30, right? Yep. 6.30, be there, or just be there. It'll be good. So I think that's everything. You can check everything else out in the bulletin. Uh, make sure that you are continuing to pray. It is vacation season. Folks are coming and going. So make sure that you are covering folks with prayers that they get back to us safe and sound. I know that a lot of Boy Scout, Girl Scout camps are happening. Uh, big stuff because it's summer. And we have friends who are getting ready to head off to college soon. <laughs> can't even talk about it. Uh, <laughs> so prayers for those folks. We have some folks who have undergone some tests and some procedures, and we have some folks who are looking forward to those kinds of things. So prayers for them as well. And of course, we have Freedom School in this very place. Um, some pretty amazing things are happening. So keep praying over our scholars and our teachers, um, because it is awesome. We have we have a great time, and we're learning lots. We even heard um, some of our third graders have already passed their tests. So, yes, good, good stuff, friends. So lots on your prayer plates as well. <sighs> Take that deep breath. And let's pray, get ourselves centered for worship, shall we? God, you are so good. And we are so grateful. We're grateful for the ways that you show your love to us through other people, through just the perfect timing of a hug or a smile or a phone call, through the ways that a song can speak to us or a prayer seems to speak exactly to our situation. Lord, thank you for your Holy Spirit and the ways that it connects us with people we need to be connected with. Thank you most of all for your son Jesus, who shows us your love in real ways, just when we need it the most. So God, be with us. Pour your Holy Spirit into and over us as we worship, as we pray, as we sing, as we learn, as we listen, or even, Lord, as we just rest in this place today. Be with us. This is our prayer, today and every day. We love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. And all of God's people say, Amen. 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 Friends, I want to invite you to stand with us as we sing together this morning our first song, Graves into Gardens. It's all about God's restoring power. So let's sing it out.
I searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise And treasures of fame Are never enough You came along And put me back together is now satisfied here in your love oh there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you there's nothing nothing is better I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, you've seen them all, you still call me friend, cause the God of the mountain, is the God of the valley. There's not a place where mercy and grace will find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing. Oh, there's nothing, oh, there's nothing better than you, there's nothing better than you, there's nothing, nothing is better than you. You turn morning to dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory you're the only one who can you turn morning to dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory
amen. Friends, you can go ahead and have a seat. Good morning. If any young disciples want to come up and join us. Good morning. How are you today? Good? You're good. So I'm filling in for Miss Kelly. She is the pro at this, so I'm still a newbie. I think four times still counts as a newbie, right? Um, Miss Miss Kelly is on vacation. Pastor Angie is going to discuss Isaiah today. And I'm going to kind of share just the children's message, okay? Do you both know how to swim? Do you like going in the deep end? Yeah. So when you first learn to swim, are those what are those things that you put on? Floaties. Floaties. Do you still use floaties? No. Okay. Nice. So do you? We're gonna kind of talk about maybe like our experiences swimming. Like, I remember when I was a kid and I first was learning to swim that I was scared to go in the deep end. I wanted to hold on to the side of the pool just because I knew it was safer and I knew I wouldn't sink. Or I'd stay where I could reach and I could tiptoe on the water, right? Do you guys ever do that? Sometimes. Do you do that in the shallow end? Oh, lots of flips. Wow. I'm impressed. Almost a handstand. All right. So, like, when I was learning, I had, um, like, a swim teacher. And he promised that he wouldn't let me fall. And I finally got enough courage to keep swimming because he kept his hand right below my belly so that if I stopped swimming and I started to sink, he was right there. And so we're going to discuss in Isaiah how God is always there. Not if, when, not if when things go bad, but when things go bad or things get hard and there's deep waters that we go through, that he's right there to catch us every time. Not just sometimes, but every time. So as you guys build your confidence to go in the deep end and we face things in the world that are hard, maybe starting a new school or going to a camp where we don't know anybody or maybe a new job, we're not sure who we're going to eat lunch with. That's always a big one, right? So we know that he's always going to catch us when we're in those deep waters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So she just shared that when you go to kindergarten or first grade and you're the new kid, it's kind of hard because you're not sure who you're going to be friends with right away because you don't know who's going to be there. Even your teacher. You're right. You have to wait and see, right? But we always know that God's going to be there to catch us, right? So we are going to pray, and then you guys are going to go back to the back table with Miss Teresa, okay? So let's pray. Um, Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for these young disciples. Lord, we know that you're going to be there to catch us whenever things get deep, and we need to remind ourselves and those around us that you are with us always and to look to you for guidance. In your holy name we pray. Amen. You are way faster than Kelly. She said in first service, I got to learn how to slow down. I'm like, no, no, you're fine. But I was still getting all my stuff together, making sure my microphone was on. I had to make sure it was off while I was singing, because I want you guys to come back. Yee! There's a reason I'm not in the band. There was a song that we sang when I was in the eighth grade choir. Can't sing purdy, but I sure sing loud. I think Mr. Osborne may have picked it out for me. I don't know, maybe not, I don't know. It's not all about me, right? 
One scripture to share with us today. Um, We've been hanging out in Isaiah for the last week, and the scripture that I'm sharing this morning is not one that we've read yet. It's tomorrow's lesson. How many of you have decided after Pastor Jason gave that great intro last week that you are using the prophets as your on-ramp and you're joining us in this endeavor? Really? How many of you were already doing it? Okay, a few of you. And some of you are like, eh, come see, come saw, a little bit, a little bit. Okay. All right, no pressure. We don't do pressure here. So we'll, we'll get you in there eventually. Um, I did hear cheering, though, when he, when, when he said we were going to be hitting the New Testament pretty soon. All right, friends, this is a scripture that I hope is pretty familiar for you. And for our friends who are worshiping online, I do need to tell you that the online worship guide said that we were in Proverbs 43, and that is not the case. It is Isaiah 43. Uh, verses 1 through 7, and I'm sharing from the New Revised Standard Version, and it's under the heading, Restoration and Protection Promised. But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, And from the west, I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit in me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Holy God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I know that I say it a lot, but this is one of my favorites. Because it is. Um, I have lots of favorites for lots of seasons, but this is one of my favorites. I know it's not all about me, but this is one of my favorites. This was my, this, this was my ordination scripture. And I'll tell you why it was my ordination scripture. And, and if you've ever been in my office or the abyss, as we call it, especially in the summertime, and Anna's laughing because she, she dares to go in there regularly. Um, it's not bad. The kayak is gone. For real, there was a kayak in there. <laughs> um, my banner, my ordination banner says, I have called you by name and you are mine. Um, and... Our, um, the ordination process in the United Methodist Church is a long one. Um, you are required to have a master's of divinity in order to be um, an ordained clergy person in the Methodist Church, and you go through a process. We all refer to it as the process, capital T, capital P, and um, 
way back when I went through it, um, but not as far back as some of our colleagues have gone, um, the districts all had different, different reputations. Um, some districts were known as the, they were really tough on female candidates, and some districts were really tough on your baptismal theology. Some really wanted to know what Paul's eschatology was about. And some of you are like, what is eschatology? Um, it's okay. It's all right. You, you know about it. You probably just don't know what eschatology means, and that's okay. These 25-cent words that we throw around. Anyway, the districts all had different things, but now everything is consistent. But we would be terrified when we would have to go in front of the district or the conference for these meetings. And some of you were here when we had student pastors a lot, and you remember how terrified some of these folks would be. And our supervised years uh, pastor would say to us, he would pray these words over us before we would go in for our interviews. He would say, God has called you. He has called you by name. You are his. And it might feel like you're drowning, but he's going to get you through these waters. It might feel like fire, but you're not going to be burned. You belong to God. God has called you to this. Don't be afraid. And he would pray. David would pray these words into us. So these, these, words, these words are prayed into my bones. These are prayed into the fibers of my being. And these are the words that give me the confidence to speak truth to power. These are the words that give me the confidence to stand up to people who are, who are way higher on the food chain than I am and say things that need to be said and speak up for the little guy because I'm a little guy too. Um, and so this is, this is a scripture that I feel God has spoken into my heart, into my being. And so I see it with Christian eyes, but I also see it with, with Christ follower eyes, with servant eyes, with a servant heart as well. Now, this morning's lesson is written on my heart for that reason, but not just for that reason. Um, but even when you look at it in the context, and I know that Pastor Jason started giving you a really good history lesson and how we have the, the, the different writers and how they lumped it all together. And so now we're in the midst of Second Isaiah. And, it's, and it might feel a little jarring after First Isaiah. Um, you may have felt the way the tone changed. It's kind of like... Um, you know, your mom has been in a great mood, and she's been telling you all these, these um, things, and then all of a sudden, someone had called her, and now she's in a bad mood. Um, did that ever happen to you when you were a kid? Um, or a teacher, the teacher was foul all morning, and then at lunch, something happened, and then she was great in the afternoon. Did that ever happen? Well, what we have with Isaiah is we've been hearing, repent, repent, repent. Judgment is coming. This has got to happen. Y'all got to change. We've got to get our act together. Come on, guys. And now we're in 2nd Isaiah. I love you. You're mine. You have nothing to fear. But I've got you. <laughs> comfort, oh Israel, comfort. It's a little jarring, isn't it? And that's one of the ways we know that it's, it's still in the same line. It's still talking to Israel. It's still talking to, to the people. It's still telling our story. It's a different writer. So now we're hearing this promise, this promise of hope and renewal, this promise of comfort, this promise of presence, this promise of restoration. So we finished first Isaiah we find ourselves in this, in this new tone, and the shift is there. We still have the memory of how we need to get it together, but now we have this promise of presence. And we had it there before, but now it's more overt. And we have this promise of presence. We have this promise of restoration. This promise that God is with us in the midst of all of it. And because we come at this all of these years later 
we tend to see it with Christ follower eyes, with a, with a Christian lens. So we tend to see Jesus in, in this. We tend to maybe even hear it as Jesus speaking to us. I am with you. I'm with you in the deep waters. I'm with you in the fire. You're not going to drown. You're not going to burn up because I'm with you. And so I, I want to... I want to share with you, and, and it might be because as I'm reading through, as I'm doing the Bible year alongside with you, um, this time around I'm, I'm reading in the message. And so um, I want to share with you from the message just, just a small piece um, of our scripture. Actually, I'm going to share the whole part, but I'm going to pause right smack in the middle. Um, so hear it, hear it in the message as well. Um, and its heading is, When You're Between a Rock and a Hard Place. But now, God's message, the God who made you in the first place, Jacob, the one who got you started, Israel, don't be afraid. I've redeemed you. I've called your name. You're mine. When you're in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you're in rough waters, you won't go down. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end. Because I'm God, your personal God, the Holy of Israel, your Savior. I paid a huge price for you. All of Egypt with rich Cush and Seba thrown in, that's how much you mean to me. That's how much I love you. I'd sell off the whole world to get you back. Trade the creation just for you. Pause, 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 pause. Do you hear that, friends? This is where, this is where our Christian lens really clicks into place, right? This is it. Because we know, we know, God has already demonstrated for us we see this, we see how God has laid out, has, has played out these words. God has given the whole world for us in his son Jesus Christ. He took on the flesh, gave up creation for us, gave up, you know, hung that divinity on the hook, if you will, for a hot minute, took on the flesh to be with us died a sinner's death, even though he was without sin. Gave the whole world, paid a huge price for us. Trade creation just for us. So we, we have that lens, we see it, we know it. We know the good news, we know restoration. We know it personally. Unpause. So don't be afraid, because I'm with you. Don't be afraid, I'm with you. I'll round up all the scattered children, pull them from east and west. I'll send orders north and south, send them back. Return my sons from distant lands, my daughters from faraway places. I want them back. Every last one of them who bears my name, every man, woman, and child whom I created for whom I created for glory, yes, personally formed and made each one. Remember in Psalms, if you've been reading along, I knit you, I formed you in your mother's womb. I know every hair on your head. I created you for my glory. Friends, this is, this is a love letter. This is a love letter to us from our God, from our creator, a reminder that we don't have to be afraid no matter what's coming down the pike. No matter what's coming down the pike. He's with us. We have nothing to fear. No matter what. Because he created us for glory. And he knows every hair on our head. And friends, we know this. 
we know it in our bones. We get reminded of it in our scriptures, in our songs, in our prayers. Your pastors get up here and we tell you this over and over until we're blue in the face. But there is a whole world of people who need to hear this good news, who need to be reminded that they too have been created in love, created for glory, created by a Savior, created by a Creator who loves them, created them for so much more than fear. There's so much fear in the world. And if we think about the problems that we are encountering, the things that are tearing this world, that are breaking this world up, it almost always boils down to fear. And we know, friends, that fear often comes because someone feels out of control. And we know that control isn't something that is ours to have. Don't be afraid. I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. I'll be with you in the deep waters. When the fires rage, I got you. That's the Angie paraphrase. Friends, we have to take this word out into the world. The world desperately needs to hear this good news. The world desperately needs this shot of courage right in the arm or the leg, you know, whatever. The world desperately needs to hear this message so that it doesn't fear, so that love and justice and mercy and grace and all of the good stuff can take root and grow. That's why we do the things we do. That's why we feed our neighbors. That's why education is so important to our congregation. That's why we are so generous with each other, with our neighbors, with our community, with our apportionments. I kind of went on that little, I, that little tangent this morning during offering in, in, first, in the 930 service. You know, we, are so, we are so generous because we know what those things support. It supports the missionaries. It supports the camps. It supports the ways that we grow. The delegation, the West Ohio delegation that's going over to the North Katanga Conference, um, they left this, in the wee hours this morning. Apportionment dollars support that, that, that bridge building, that grace giving, that seed planting of mercy and justice and love. That's our generosity at work so that it can squelch the fear and grow the grace and grow the love and grow the hope and grow the justice. All of these things that we're called to grow, that we've been knit together in God's glory, for God's glory. So we've been called to this and reminded that this is a God of restoration. We are in a season of restoration. And much like, um, I almost called her Pastor Kelly again. She's, gonna, she's not going to be happy with me. Miss Kelly talked last week about the eraser, and then you flip the pencil back over, and you keep writing, you keep working after you correct your mistake. You know, God doesn't, you know, when, when we wreck, when we make the mistake, or we wreck our car, we get a dent, we don't just throw it up on blocks right away and be done with it. You know, God says, oh, no, 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 no. We'll, we'll change that tire. We'll, we'll buff out that dent. It adds character. We'll just keep driving. We're going to keep going. God doesn't say he's done with us. God is in the restoration business. I have redeemed you. You are mine. 
do not fear. I have called you by name. Good reminders, friends. Good reminders of, of who we are and whose we are and to what we are called. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you for these familiar words. We thank you for their beauty, for the courage that they summon in us, for the call that they remind us of, for the promise that they put in front of us. Give us, Lord, that courage once again. Give us, Lord, what it is that we need to take this good news out into the world, to remind the world, to remind the broken and the hurting and the lost and the least that they too have been made for your glory. Lord, help us to get over our fears. Give us the courage to love as we have been loved to restore as we have been restored. This is our prayer. Let the people say, Amen. Amen. If you're able, I'm about you to stand again as we respond together through worship, respond through song, and uh, sing together and proclaim the goodness of God.
Try that one more time, sorry. When darkness tries to roll over my bones, when sorrow comes to steal joy I own when brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. And shame no longer has a place to hide. And I am not a captive to the lies. I'm not afraid to leave my past behind. I won't be shaken, I won't be shaken, cause my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I power that can break off every chain this power
forth out into this world wading into the waters looking at those fires knowing that we have been called to bring the good news that he is with us and our fear doesn't stand a chance because we stand in his love so go forth out into this world out into the places that you'll go whether it's Kroger's or work, school, wherever it is, go out into this world as an agent of courage, of grace, of mercy, of his love. Go in the name of the one who made you, the one who saved you, and the one who sustains you. Go in peace. Go in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.